If you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have wondered, how long did it take me to get this good, to get to this point in my work? You might be wondering, how long would it take you to do the same thing? And how long does it take when you haven't gone to art school and aren't going to? These are exactly what I'm going to explore in today's video. If you're new here, well, you may want to go <laughs> look at some of my other videos for context since today I'm just going to be looking at old work, but if you are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea. I am a full-time professional oil painter specializing in expressive portraits. Every week I share a new video on mastering your unique style of painting, and my cat is chiming in because she wants you to know that she's hungry. I have tried to tell her that the food is on its way. <laughs> but there might be some interruptions throughout this video. My cat Boomer would also like you to know that if you enjoy this video or learn something helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And if you especially enjoy or learn from my content and you would like help achieving professional quality in your portraiture, I do offer mentorships designed around this exact goal. For more information, you can check out the links in the description to find out more and apply to see if we are a fit to work together. Okay, so let's dive into my painting journey. So first things first, I'm going to give you all a little bit of backstory or overview of what my overall journey has looked like. It is going to be very different from person to person, and I don't think that this has to stand in the way, but in the spirit of giving you guys a complete picture, let's go ahead and start from where I started which is when I was super duper little. My mom actually saved this like preschool crayon <laughs> exercise um, that I did when I was probably two or something like that, where the teacher pulled her aside after and said, I think your daughter's going to be an artist. And I thought that was such a sweet story that combined with the fact that she saved this little coloring exercise, I went ahead and framed it. The next thing, the next oldest thing that I have to show you all is an oil painting that, I mean, really my grandmother did it, but but I, I helped her. I, she says that I made it with her. Um, I'm not sure exactly the extent of this collaborative effort, but it was, to the best of my knowledge, the first time I played with oil paint at all. Fun fact, getting this painting cleaned in order to frame it was quite the adventure because it had so many crayon marks over top of the paint layer that I wanted to get off before I put a coat of varnish on it. Supposedly, I was three when this painting was made. That being said, I wouldn't say this was a particularly auspicious start to my painting career. I did do a lot of doodling and drawing cats and drawing horses in elementary school, middle school, I doodled a lot instead of taking notes in class. That being said, I don't really have much in the way of examples of these pieces. So the next thing we're going to dive into is the work that I made in high school. By this point, I was pretty darn confident in my drawing skills. I would say that I had the ability to, in general, put shapes in the correct place, especially if working in something like pencil. Painting was a little bit trickier, but this is the time where I really was diving into acrylic and oil in a serious way for the first time. Here I have one of my very first oil pieces that I can remember. This was a still life where I learned that if you <laughs> blend your rendering of glass for a still life, that glass is going to become very frosty. So there were aspects of this piece that I was very proud of, and I definitely learned some things here. That being said, I also had my share of false starts or pieces where I just learned really helpful things about the nature of oil painting, or I saw where there were gaps in my understanding of anatomy, and this horse painting is a good example of that. Overall, though, I wouldn't say that art in high school taught me a great deal. I think it was more that it gave me an opportunity to practice, and I've talked about this lately on my channel, but I think creating consistency in your painting practice and opportunities to paint more regularly are probably the most important. That's why I focus on mindset so much in what I talk about, because if you get burnt out, if you get bored, if you are suffering from block, well, that consistency really goes out the window. And overall, 
we do want to be intentional with our practice, but we can be as intentional as we want if we're not actually getting any practice, it doesn't matter. But where I would say that I really sprung ahead, there were really two places where this happened. The first was when I started taking workshops in high school. So here are some examples of some portraits that I made in a Rob Liberace workshop. I would say he's the first big time teacher I had. I learned a great deal about oil painting just from getting to watch him paint and hearing some of his tips. You can actually see down in this larger canvas here some examples from Rob of how to go about placing oil down on the face in very simple terms. I remember this lesson to this very day. He was saying that you want to go ahead and mass in your overall color and then build nuance on top of that rather than kind of piecing in color by color as a jigsaw puzzle. Now, I've since learned that there are a lot of different ways you can go about this. This is Rob's particular method, but I often think about this lesson from him to this very day. And when I look at these particular pieces, it's interesting. I, I see quite a lot going on here. I see some anatomy errors on my color portrait to the left. I actually much prefer the drawing that's on the larger canvas to the right. I'm actually quite pleased with some of these detail studies of the nose and the eye. And then I'd, I'd say this, this value study is okay. It's pretty darn dark. I don't have like a lot of control of the values, but if memory serves, I'm pretty content with the likeness. Now, the upside to learning from Rob was that seeing him work and being in an environment where the model was set up for us made such a tremendous difference. I really didn't know I had these paintings in me, and I believe this is the first time I ever painted from a live model. So while I'm sure I could like pick these images apart, I'm not going to because they were breakthrough pieces, and I'm more focused even now on like just how much progress they represent versus you know what I could have possibly done better. With that being said, you know the downside to something like workshops is that I think I got to study with Rob two maybe three times and it was once every couple of years while I was in high school and later college. So for your own practice it's really essential that you have an overall structure and that you aren't relying too heavily on workshops to represent those breakthroughs breakthroughs, but rather you're going in with a really specific intention or you have a more general support system to help you to reach your goals. But with these workshops in particular, they were just so different from what I had been experiencing otherwise that they really did unlock a breakthrough for me. And I was able to go back into high school painting with much more confidence in the work that I was doing. Now, from here, we transition into college. Now, I didn't go to an art school, but I did briefly study within the fine arts program at the university that I attended. It didn't take me long to realize that I really wasn't going to get out of it what I expected. And unfortunately, this is what I see across the board when I talk to painters that you all admire. There really wasn't much that I learned in this program. Again, it was more that it gave me the opportunity to practice over and over again, which is what we see with this particular still life piece. At this time, you can tell I don't really have much of an understanding of edges. You know, overall, I'd say the color is looking nice. The drawing is pretty accurate. Not that you would really know from drawings of fruit. Um, I'm sure there's a lot that could be said about the perspective, but I think the biggest thing that stands out to me is that I don't have any edges here that suggest these objects are round, and that wasn't really a concept that we explored at the time either. But one advantage to college is that I had a ton of opportunities to draw from life and to draw the figure and the, the model. Um, so I'm gonna be thumbing through my sketchbook here I'm gonna be skipping over a lot, unfortunately, because there are a lot of nude studies and I doubt YouTube's gonna be super excited about that. But I've tried to pick some pieces that are obviously from when I was in college and kind of representative of what I was capable of at the time. And overall, I'd say these are a blend of drawings from the model, drawings from like TV stills, <laughs> um, drawings of people that I knew. Overall, I would say, in general, the proportions, the drawing is working pretty well, um, but there's really not much in the way of value control, you know, mark making edges. Obviously, we can't really see my grasp of color in here, um, but there's a lot that got solidified at this time, 
And there's still a long way to go. And again, this is why I think it's just so important and so helpful to just have a consistent practice over the long run. I didn't have any undue need to suddenly just reach the next level in my work the next day. Instead, I just showed up over and over and over again over time and I started to see these little details just start to fall into place. Now, the final really helpful push that I experienced happened while I was in college. I took a summer and I studied at an atelier. And here I went through a pretty traditional curriculum, one that you would find at a lot of ateliers. I started with bar drawing and then we slowly kind of got our toes wet with some live drawing. So I have a couple of bar plates here. You can see my reference on the left and my drawing on the right. Um, like most classical, atelier environments, you aren't done until it basically looks perfect. I really had no idea that I could have this level of accuracy in my work. Um, so that was a huge breakthrough. The other thing that I learned that was just so impressive to me is that anyone can learn this. I watched artists with all kinds of different backgrounds all get to the point where they could make these images that looked every bit as strong as mine. It's a very teachable method. And I think this really is borne out when you take a look at my final portrait drawing here. The level of sensitivity in terms of the form, the control of values, the subtlety of so much of the shapes. Um, it's just so much more intentional than anything I had done prior to this. Now, the downside with the atelier, you might be looking at these thinking like, wow, I should go join mine. Here's the downside. It's so easy to burn out in that environment. And I, I watch this happen to a lot of different painters. I know that this has happened to painters who've gone to all kinds of different schools. It's not necessarily a function of just one school. Overall, I would say the curriculum they put you through is very effective, but it can be very tedious and you can reach a point where you just feel blocked or you feel tired of making this kind of work. So, you know, kind of comparing like the workshop route with the atelier route, and I'll speak to the art school route too, of course, but I'd say workshop Workshops are great because they give you this little boost of energy. They can kind of help you create small breakthroughs, but they don't give you that consistency that you need over time. Ateliers do, but it can almost go so far to the other extreme that you're prone to feeling burnt out and needing a break. I know that after this experience, I actually did not draw or paint or do anything artistic for a full year. Um, I, was, I was so tired from doing this work in this environment. So what I really focus on with my mentees, with my students, is really striking the balance between these two. You know, what do we need to do in terms of your painting practice to cultivate consistency, to get you excited, to avoid tedium, to avoid burnout, while also bringing in the infinitely teachable things that I discovered at that atelier. Now, the reason that I don't stress like the pros and cons of art school in this conversation is that from what I understand from my own experience and talking with other painters who are really accomplished, art school really didn't teach them anything. It just gave them the opportunity to work on their own artistic ambitions. And so if you are wondering if you need art school or if you're at a disadvantage because you're, you haven't gone, I want to go ahead and tell you, you don't need to worry about that. Instead, I would focus on really finding this ideal middle ground where you have the consistency, you have a curriculum that you are studying that is teachable, you know, that you, you can really trust that you can get results from that method, and where it pays attention to your mindset and it keeps you energized and it keeps you excited to keep making things. There is no one size fits all timeline. For me, what we looked at today was probably about 20 years worth of of drawings and paintings, but you know, it's taken me 30 to get where I am today. I wouldn't have rushed it. I wouldn't have done it any other way. That being said, if you have already had a career, if you're like about to retire, for instance, and you really want to make the most of that time and you just have a couple of years to really get to the point where you're proud of what you're making, 
We can absolutely structure something that brings in the best of all of these systems and helps you to get to that point within you know, a few years time. But if there's one goal that I have for this video, if there's one takeaway that I hope that you have, it's that it isn't too late. You didn't need to be born with a certain amount of talent. Obviously the things that I showed you today are pieces that were successful enough to keep, but there were so many pieces throughout this whole journey that absolutely weren't. I got to this point because of time and consistency and being intentional with my practice and my craft. And you can accomplish something really similar if you put the same sorts of things in place for yourself. If you would like help putting together a plan around this, again, there's more info in the description around my mentorships. I'd love to hop on a call and discuss your goals and what timeline and what process looks best for you. I'd love to hear from you and until next time, happy painting.